it's, it's really incredible to recognize the, the original brightness and openness of our mind. So our, our mind is already completely wide open and clear, like a clear sky, Inclu <coughs> inclusive of all data, so inclusive of all of our experience, our thoughts, emotions and sensations. And um, we see everything clearly already. We don't need to effort for this brightness and this openness of mind to be the case. So. Um, The word that we can use, or the term that we can use here, is open intelligence. And open intelligence really is just a way to describe um, anything that's going on right now. So anything that you can experience right now is open intelligence. And there's no effort for this experience to be the case. You're just simply experiencing everything. And um, the big shift for me in this training and this practice and this teaching was a life... Uh, it was based on efforting and hard work and striving and struggling and life really always seemed to be a struggle and a challenge and hard work. And even when things were going well and uh, I was enjoying myself, there was still always something that needed to be done. There was always a, a sense of trying to maintain that happy state or to try and work out why I'm happy and then hold on to those circumstances and keep them in place. And um, and then when things weren't going so well, then it was really challenging. <coughs> it was really difficult. Because I had to work out why are things going so badly? Why do I feel so lonely? Or why do I feel so unhappy and miserable? And then spending hours thinking about it and talking about it with other people and reading books about it and looking for this solution. And um, to understand the basic nature of mind as being this completely wide open, clear expanse, <coughs> that is indivisible from all of the descriptions about what's going on. There's not one description, one thought, emotion or sensation that can be found to have a nature separate or apart from the intelligence in which and as which it's known. The reason why this is important is because when we take our experiences, our thoughts, emotions and sensations, this stream of data, to have an independent nature, then this is what causes us the trouble because we think we have to work at things, we have to effort at things, we need to control and manipulate our experience to discover this sense of ease and well-being. And um, that's really what I thought for so long. And I spent all of my time and energy working out what needs to change, what needs to, what needs to be different, what do I need to understand further, what's going to give me what I'm looking for. And I looked in all kinds of places for this sense of satisfaction and well-being and ease. Um, the conventional places like um, um, intimate relationships and having money and um, having a job, um, physical well-being, thinking that when I achieved certain certain amount of money or a certain degree of physical fitness or um, had a certain status in my career, that that would give me this sense of well-being. And although I might have achieved these things and felt this sort of sense of okayness, it, it never lasted. You know, there was no way to hold that in place. Like all of my other experiences, it was appearing spontaneously and then completely effortlessly self-releasing. Again, there was this effortless quality to life that just somehow always seemed to evade me. I always needed to seem to work more and more. And to be introduced to just a completely different approach to the way that I can use my mind. So instead of trying to work everything out, instead of trying to think further about the descriptions and work out why am I not achieving this state that I want to achieve, just to rest naturally for a short moment, just to stop describing and recognize this already brilliant, bright openness of mind, just for an instant. And as soon as I did that, there was this um, just sense of relief. It was like letting this, this really heavy load of all of my descriptions about everything, just, just letting it drop to the ground. And it was a huge surprise to me to recognize that I was actually okay. I was okay as I am. All of the stories I had about myself were simply more descriptions appearing within this vastness of mind 
all of the ideas, all of the past history, all of the personality traits, all of the identification with the body. All of these were simply more of this dynamic energy pouring forth from this wide open expanse of mind. And until I recognized that each and every one of these was nothing other than this dynamic energy, then all of them were something that I needed to do something about. All of them were things that I needed to think about. And to see that now I had a different way of doing things, of approaching life. I could just relax for a short moment and allow everything to be as it is. And this effortless quality, this bright openness of mind, that was already the basis of everything that I was experiencing, that had just gone unnoticed, naturally became more and more obvious. And practically what this meant was that um, I became smarter. Because instead of spending all of my time and energy and all of my um, intelligence <coughs> trying to focus in on the descriptions and trying to make sense out of them, comparing them with other descriptions, other labels, other concepts, I was now allowing this bright brilliance of mind just to be as it was, just to see everything clearly. And this effortless way of being, this spontaneous existence that is actually the nature of reality, becomes more and more a lived experience. And in relationship, what that means is that instead of basing our relations on our descriptions about ourselves and other people, the relationship and the relating is based on this complete openness of perception that is the basis of everything. And we just tap into that one short moment at a time. The habit of describing everything is just a habit. So like any habit, we can learn new habits. And you could say what we're learning here is the habit of open intelligence. Just the habit of relying on the already bright brilliance of our mind, instead of collapsing into endless stories and descriptions about what was going on. And I was just thinking that it, it, it's just changed everything for me, this, this shift in perspective. And in a practical way, the way that I relate to people is so different my habit of describing and um, categorizing everything was so ingrained that I could walk into a room of 50 people and within two seconds I would have categorized everybody in certain ways, like everybody. And it would happen so quickly, it would be too young, too old, too interesting, too boring, too freaky, um, too normal, attractive, too attractive, da 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 da, -da everybody to such a degree that there would be nobody in that room that I really wanted to speak to. <laughs> it was just like, in an instant, I knew that I didn't really, I didn't, didn't really relate to anybody there. And this is the relating based on descriptions, based on trying to categorize everything. Now when I come into a room of people, I just rest naturally. And the descriptions may arise, and now I know I can take a short moment and allow them to be as they are. And what's left is this openness of perception. What's left is this open-hearted relating that means I can really just connect with anybody. Like anybody. It's incredible. Totally different way of, of living life, of living life in community. And when groups of people come together like this, something magical happens. When everybody's taking responsibility for allowing their descriptions just to flow on by, and instead relying on and relating from this openness of perception, our own bright intelligence, then relating, working in teams, getting things done, is completely different. This effortless way of being, this spontaneous reality, this is where we are living from and as. Not these narrow, limited descriptions about who we are. And it is hilarious to see things like... Um, how much I believe the descriptions that I am my body. Like, this is who I am. Like, how ingrained that idea has become. So ingrained that anything that challenges that is, like, you know, really quite shocking. But actually, as, as we heard earlier, to see, well, what's my experience of my body? Every now and again I'm aware of having a body. Every now and again I think about it. Maybe when I feel something or I stub my toe or there's a gurgle in the stomach. But most of the time, all I am is this complete perceptual openness. 
And every now and again, these perceptions or these ideas or sensations about the body appear within this vast perceptual openness. So let's get the correct perspective on our body. Let's get the correct perspective on all of our descriptions. And um, it's quite funny, the question about how did you become a balanced view trainer, because I could... I mean, I could, I could sit and I could tell you a story. You know, it started off with my parents. You know, and, and I could give you this incredible... I mean, I could go back, obviously, much further than that, but it's, it's so funny to see, well, I could make up any story about how this happened, how did I become the way that I am, or what did I do, what I'm doing. But actually, it's been a completely effortless unfolding. And what I see is the more I rely on open intelligence, and the more I train this up, using what's on offer here, then what I see is this spontaneous, effortless way of being is nothing other than, ex than an expression of great benefit. And this is actually the way that I'd always wanted to live. To live a life that was um, just naturally aligned with this beneficial nature of everything, without needing to think about it. There's one talk that Candice gave, and she speaks about being a secret slacker. <laughs> so I've always been a secret slacker. It's like, how did she know? <laughs> you know, I always wanted to have um, a, a powerful life that was full of meaning and possibility, and was really easy. And now I see that this is the um, access to the intelligence of the universe. It's having this relaxed disposition of complete openness that sees everything as it is, and then from that perspective knows exactly what will be of most benefit in that particular time, place and circumstance. And this is our capacity as human beings. From this perspective of complete openness, we can see what's required to take best care of our bodies without needing to collapse into a story or an identification with it being who we are. It's including everything, including our body, including our ideas about a personal identity, including all of our ideas about everything, but not limited or contained by or in any of them. It is the source of and the the essence of and the only way that we can make sense of our experience is through the recognition of open intelligence as its basis and as its essence right now with the current perception. There's no other place. It's not in five minutes when I've done this or when I've done that or when I have this thought or this experience. It is always with the current perception. And whatever point along the story you recognize that, that is perfect. So if you want to rest more deeply with the memory of an incredibly painful massage or with the intensity of adrenaline that you might feel from having drunk too many coffees, the only place that you can do that is right now. If you want to deepen your practice and your recognition, keep it that simple. It is with this perception in this moment that that is your opportunity to practice. That's so simple, so practical, not difficult at all, not in some future state or when something's a little bit different. It's just always right now. And so we repeat that for these short moments. Then everything else that's offered in Balanced View acts as a support, acts to empower us to see that we can make this choice, that we can give up the right to be a victim of this habit of describing everything that's going on and then trying to hold these labels in place and living a really constricted, uptight, effortful, unfulfilling life. And instead we can live as spontaneous reality that is always aligned with the benefit of all. And so today there's a one-day introductory training where you have the opportunity to really look at some of these texts that go into this in more detail and see, well, how does this apply to my life? Because it's all about the actual application in everyday life. It's not a philosophy or something that you need to sit and work out. It's something to put into practice in these short moments and then to use all of the support that is available to empower that in everyday life, in all situations. Mind is the basis and the essence of everything that you experience. It always has been, it is right now, and it always will be. So to get to know that basis, 
to get to know how to apply that in everyday life is what this is all about. And the results are incredible. If you want to live a carefree, powerful life where you do know what to do and what to say in each and every circumstance, then you're in the right place. So different from anything that I'd come across before. And I guess you could say that that's why I wanted to become a trainer, because I came across this and I had all kinds of ideas, but I knew that this was it. Because I could see it in my own experience and I could test it for these short moments and see whether it was always true or not. And I tested it and it was always true. There was always this intelligence that was there. And whenever I relied on it, everything was clear and I knew what to do and I knew what to say. This is incredible.